Okay. Okay, so uh, Hong Kun uh, will talk about um, gradient methods for convex concave min-max problems. So please, Hong Kun, please start. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you. Thank you, all the guys. Uh, also, I want to thank Bruno first because, uh, uh, because I swapped uh, with him. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to talk uh, some grand methods for concave, convex concave minimax problems. Okay, let me start with the, my abstract. I just passed this abstract and pass this on outline. Okay, let me start with the very beginning. Uh, uh, John, one, 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 one time. Okay. Uh, Vinamax problem actually goes back to, to von Neumann in later 1920s and 30s. Okay, as you can see, I listed two um, uh, papers by uh, von, von Neumann. Okay, the first one published in 1928, and the, the second one 1935, 36. Now, von Neumann proved proved this uh, min max min max uh, theorem. Okay. Uh, given a function f, which is quasi convex in x and quasi concave in y, then he proved this min max, uh, the uh, min max equals max min. Okay. Now, here, the two sets, x and y, are convex, convex compact subsets of some topology of linear spaces. Okay. And f objective function is continuous in, in each. Variable, and then he proved his famous minimax theorem. Okay. Now we know we know his minimax theorem had many important applications in game theory, economics, and so on. Okay. So, so, but today I'm going to focus on uh, iterative methods for solving this minimax problem. Okay. So let me now formulate this minimax problem. Okay. Uh, given a function of x, f of x and y. Now we want to first uh, maximize in y and then minimize. Okay. Now we have constraint sets Q and S. Now Q and S are closed convex subsets of Hebrew spaces H1 and H2 respectively. Now I consider the case concave, convex concave. That means the function f is convex in x for each fixed y. And then the function f is concave in y for each fixed x. Okay, so this is called a convex concave. Now, let, let me define this two called saddle point. Okay. Now, a pair of points u star and v star in the product set q by s is said to be a saddle point of f or a solution. Of the minimizing problem 1.1. Okay. If the following two inequality holds. Okay. That means that mean, if you look at the first inequality, then that means V star is a yeah, maximizer. And if you look at the second inequality, then actually you start minimizer. So this is called the min max. Okay, this is called the saddle point. Okay. <clears throat> Now in the following, I'm going to use G to, uh, to denote the product uh, set Q, Q by S and H, the product space of H1, H2, and the G star, the solution set, the solution set of the minimax problem 1.1 uh, or the set of saddle point of F. Now let me first mention some, some, some facts about uh, saddle points. Okay. First of all, it's well known. Okay, uh, F has set a point, if and only if you can interchange, you can swap the order of min and max. Okay, now existence. Existence, okay, at the beginning I mentioned the uh, von Neumann's uh, min max. Okay, but then, then in his theorem, he, you just need F is quasi convex in X, quasi concave in Y. But here I, I need here, okay, Actually, f is uh, convex in x in the first, but we require lower semicontinuous. 
Okay, now F is concave in V, concave in V, but upper semi-continuous also. Okay, then if we assume additionally, either that Q and S are bounded or some cursivity condition is satisfied. Okay, that means if for some V bar in S, uh, the function, this function is uh, uh, cursive. And for some point U bar in Q, this function minus F uh, is also cursive. Then F has at least one set of points. Existence, that's existence. Okay, now my talk is actually uh, motivated by recent application of minimax in machine learning. For example, in so-called so GAN, in statistical learning, in deep learning, in distributed computing, okay, and many more. Okay, you can find the application in articles, many articles, okay. And then let me, but, but I want to, to present some iterative way to solve the set of points. So let me first present this well-known, well-known calculization of set of points uh, 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 through VIs. Okay, now for a set of, for a function F, because F is convex in X or in U and concave in V. So let's, let, let me define this so-called set of differential partial f okay now suppose f is also also, also uh, differentiable and then we have the gradients okay so partial f is given by this formula in 1.3 okay the first gradient in terms of u the second uh, partial derivative in terms of v but with negative sign so with this negative sign then we we have okay partial f is monotone, okay, the monotone, and then we can use the variation inequality to calculate, okay. So then we can prove we can prove that v z star, which is u star v star, is the set of point of f. If and only if v star is a solution to this vi, one point four. Okay, so we can we can we can we can use the variation inequality to replace the set of point. Okay, so there are many, many um, ways uh, uh, that can be used to solve uh, VIs. And in terms of that, we can solve a set of point. Okay. Uh, now, of course, now of course, this, this is actually because the partial F, the, this operator is maximum monotone. So then this VI is equivalent to the fixed point problem. So then we can also apply fixed point method to solve a set of point. And by the way, if we consider the unconstrained case, that means Q and S are the full space, H1 and H2, then this variation inequality is reduced to this equation. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, now, now let me, let me uh, show you, let me recall you, uh, two traditional way to solve the set of point problem. Okay. The first one is uh, proved by uh, Koplovich in 1976. Now she introduced, okay, for simplicity, let's, let's define partial F by G. Okay. So in the following, we, I always, always uh, use G to, to denote the partial F, the sub differential. Okay. In 1976, Kaplevich introduced the two-step algorithm, 2.2. Now she called EG, extra coherent EG. Okay, now if you write the EG 2.2 in components, then here you have 2.3. Uh, this is just the projection, two-step projection gradient. Okay. And the middle point, Z and bar is exactly the gradient, gradient, uh, one, gradient descent. Okay. And then she proved the convergence. Okay. Now, of course, she proved the case of finite dimensional. That means 
both H1 and H2 are finite dimensional Hilbert spaces. And then of course, F is convex concave. And in addition to supposed F is L smooth. That means, okay, the partial, uh, the, the partial F uh, satisfy this condition, Lipschitz condition, okay. Then if the step side, of course the step is constant alpha, the steps are as alpha is selected in this range from zero to one over L, then she proved that the sequence generated by the GEG converges to a solution, to a saddle point of F. Okay, that's, that, that's in 1976. Now, four years later, Popov, Popov introduced another EG, another EG, okay. 2.4, okay, 1980. And uh, if you if you compare the, the two EGs, the two EGs, okay, the way to to diff, to, to define Z n plus one act, is actually the same. Like the difference lies in the definition of the middle point Z n bar. Okay, it looks like. A, Popov's definition of ZN bar is slightly more complicated. Okay. So then Popov proved once again in finite dimensional case. Okay. Now the condition on F actually the same, but the step size tall is smaller. Okay. The step size tall now is, is between zero and the one three M. Then he proved that ZN the sequence generated by, generated by his algorithm 2.4 also converges to a saddle point of F. Okay, that's, that's in 1980. Now, if you want to know what happened, what will happen in infinite dimensional setting, then I can tell you, okay, I have a mark here, okay. Under some conditions of, of Koplovich's condition and or, or of, of Popov's condition, okay. We, we can prove, we can prove, okay. We can prove actually the sequence in the infinite dimensional converge, converge also, but in weak topology. Okay. Now, of course, you need some some more more proof. Okay. That's that that may follow the fact that the mapping, this mapping, this mapping is non non expensive. If alpha is in this range, alpha between zero and two over L. So use this non-expansivity of this operator, we can prove in the infinite dimensional case that Zn can move in the weak topology. Okay. That's a too traditional. That's too traditional. Okay. Now, okay, my talk is actually based on some recent papers. I listed just four papers here. Okay. Because I find recently, recently a a fixed point algorithm, Harpo's method, has been introduced to solve uh, uh, to solve the minimax uh, minimax problem. Okay, so then I worked out some some work. Okay. Now first, let me let me introduce 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 uh, some knowledge on Harpo's Harpo. Harpo's best is actually for non expensive mappings. Okay, here's the definition, non-expensive mappings. Okay, now we use the fix of T to denote the set of fixed points of T. And um, a, a special class of a non-expensive mapping is done here, like alpha AB. Okay, okay uh, a mapping T is alpha AB if T is, can, be, can be written in this form. Okay, for some constant between zero and one, like a T can be written as one minus alpha times I plus alpha V. Here V also, yeah, okay. So if, if T can be written of this form, then we call T is alpha AV. Okay. <clears throat> and then now what is hypo? Hypo's algorithm means the iteration method 3.1. Now alpha is the sequence in zero one. U is referred to as anchor. 
x0 initial point. Okay. P is a mapping. Now, this algorithm was first introduced by by, by Hyper in 1967. Although he considered a special case, okay, in a Hebrew space where, uh, where C is closed unit ball. Okay, but uh, this, this algorithm is named, is named Hyper. Okay. Now, what is the condition? Conditions, uh, what is the convergence of this algorithm? Okay. Now, Hyper proved, how proved, okay. Uh, two necessary conditions, okay, C1 and C2. The step size alpha n here must, must converge to zero in a slightly slow rate of condition, uh, convergence. That means the series, this series must be divergent. These two are necessary conditions, but in general, it's not sufficient to guarantee convergence unless it is AV. Okay, now if, if it is not AV, you need one more condition. Now, what is the third condition that guarantees convergence? Okay, then I, I look, I look this condition in this table. Okay, now in the paper of Pipon, he of course himself introduced a third condition here, I mark C3. This is the hypothesis condition C3. Okay, then 10 years later, Pierre Lyons introduced another sufficient condition, the C4. C4. He has a C4 condition. Okay, the, this limit is equal to zero. And then, then five years later, uh, 1992, Putman introduced this condition. This series. Okay, now two years later, Shimon Reich, uh, Shimon Reich introduced this condition. The step size is decreasing. Okay. Now, 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 of course, this condition actually C six is a special case of C five. Okay. And then myself in in in, in two thousand two, I introduced the, the condition C seven, C seven. Okay. I I dropped the, the square from uh, Pierre Lyon's C four. Okay. And uh, moreover, I did uh, my paper in the setting of Banaha, Banaha space. Okay. Uh, so that, that, that's the uh, con convergence, of, okay, that's the convergence conditions. And uh, I had a survey paper jointly with my uh, co-author Hina Lopez and uh, Victoria, Victoria Martin. Okay, and in the year 2010, okay. So, so we updated up, um, up to the year 2010 about convergence of hyper. Okay. Now, now probably why, why hypo's algorithm has recently be, be in, employed to solve minimax problem, probably is due to the following the, the following rate of, of rate, because recently uh, leader proved the very nice rate of condition rate of, of convergence. The rate is capital O of one over n. This is the best. This is the best rate of condition. I can, it's the best rate. Okay. Now he proved the paper was published this year, twenty twenty one, but actually appear uh, uh, a few years before. Okay, now he proved in general Hebrew space, P is not expensive mapping. Okay, then he considered the hypos method and uh, the anchor and the initial con the point are the same. And uh, the fixed point set of P is not empty. And under these conditions, uh, with this particular choice of step size, alpha n uh, to be one over n plus two, then he obtained this rate of condition, very simple very nice okay and he also proved that this this bound is tight okay now he proved in the Hebrew space case but actually this rate of convergent holds in a general one space as pointed out recently by 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 Roberto Cominetti and he's a student actually and this actually uh, was implicitly contained 
in early paper by Sabah, okay, in, in 2017, in the papers I'm paper in 2017 actually, okay. But most people notice the rate from leaders paper, okay. So this is why I think this is why recently uh, CS people apply leaders rate and then apply hypo to min max problem. Okay. Oh, my time's okay. Okay, my I, I don't have much time, so I have to skip many many things. Okay, okay. Now let me mention now. Now, many problems can be reduced to a fixed point problem. Then, of course, you can use fixed point uh, to solve that problem. In particular, for example, evaluation of inequality. Okay. Well, this value inequality in, in, in the case where F is monotone, then this is equivalent to this fixed point problem. Then, of course, you can apply hypo. Okay, you can apply hypo. Okay and to, 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 to violation inequality, but I have to skip, to skip. Okay, now constrained convex minimizing problem is again equivalent to a fixed point problem. Then you can apply hypo to solve the fixed point problem, then in turn you solve the minim max uh, uh, minimizing problem. Okay, and if you consider this convex composite minimi minimizing problem, this problem is again equivalent to a fixed point problem. So you can apply hyper to solve the composite convex minimizing problem. Okay. And uh, for example, if you want, okay, con to consider this, uh, this problem, find zero of the sum of two maximum one of the operators. Now, now we know this can be solved by the famous, by the well-known now, uh, so-called so, so called DR, uh, uh, Douglas Ratchford. Okay, now Douglas Ratchford. Douglas Ratchford is actually at a fixed point. It's a fixed point problem. So, so that means that means you can apply, uh, apply hyper to Douglas Ratchford. So then I call, I call. I call uh, DRH, uh, Douglas Ratchford Hypo. Now this is a DRH, this is DRH. Now we can prove convergence of DRH, okay, DRH. And then we have the rate of convergence. So we can apply it to fixed point algorithm. Then now finally, okay, I have, let me, let me now, okay, okay. One, one more, one slide more. Okay, now we, I can apply Hypo to uh, minimax. Because I, as I mentioned, the minimax, minimax problem in my, in my case, convex concave case, okay, and the minimax problem is equivalent to a variation inequality, which is in turn equivalent to a fixed point problem. Then we can apply a hypo to that fixed point problem, okay. So then we, we have this algorithm, okay. We apply the uh, hypo to this operator, which is the the, the fixed point uh, operator for the minimax problem. Okay, now here I use the maximum rate uh, coefficient to avail. This is a maximum. So the operator is non expansive, not necessarily uh, AV. Okay. Anyway, I can apply hypo. Then we get this algorithm. Okay, now finally, let, let, let me, let me mentioned to you, maybe to you, so the so-called EAG method, extra anchor gradient method. Okay, now I just follow the setting of the two Korean young mathematician, uh, Yun and uh, Lu. Okay, they introduced in their recent papers, this is a conference preceding paper published this year. Okay, they considered the unconstrained minimax problem 4.8, okay in finite dimensional case. Okay, they introduced the algorithm 4.9, they, they call this algorithm EAG, an X anchor. Okay. And then they discuss the rate of convergence of this algorithm. 
Now, what does that prove? Okay, they consider the case where the so-called anchoring coefficient beta k is always taken to be to be to be one over k plus two. Okay, this is a choice in leaders' uh, rate of convergence. Okay, and then they consider two cases for step size. One constant step size. The other uh, depend on the step. Okay, they they call EAGC. C means constant step size, and EAGV V means variable uh, step size. So for algorithm for 5.1 and algorithm 5.2. Okay, now they prove they discuss the rate of convergence in two cases. The first case was for EAGC constant step size. They obtained actually one over k. Because in their article, they 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 put square, they put square on, on this on the left hand side, and then of course they they obtain the so called one over k square. And then the second theorem they obtained is the the case of EAGV, the EAGV, the same rate, the rate is same, but of course the coefficients are different. Okay, but they have not discussed the convergence of the sequence is ek generated by EAGC and EAGV. They have not discussed anything about convergence of, of ZK. Okay, now if you compare, if you compare their, their EAG with, with uh, a couple of wages, EG. Now, a couple of wages, EG, in the unconstrained case, then you find, then find, okay, the EAG for 5.3 is actually just uh, the, 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 the high point version. High point version. High point version, okay, you have anchor, then you, you, you make this convex combination. Okay, so, you, so we can view, view, view um, EAG as, as anchor coupled with EG. Now, correspondingly, of course, you also have anchor uh, proposed EG. But we don't know. We don't know. We have not discussed the convergence of these algorithms yet. Okay. What uh, I want to uh, to present the final uh, is okay. Uh, in in the EAG, the update the update of zk plus one. Okay, you update the middle point zk bar. Now why? Why you don't update the point ZK here? So I also update, uh, I replace this ZK bar, update the ZK bar by the middle point, which and then, then I, I want to discuss the conversion of this, this you know, 5.7. Okay, the difference from EAG is I use ZK bar, the middle point here. Okay, the, the two Korean, the guys uh, EAGs keep using ZK here. Okay. Also, I can use different anchor. The anchor and the starting point may be different. Okay, then I proved convergence. I can I proved convergence. Okay. Uh, the step size gamma K, you just satisfy this bounds. Okay. Now the, the anchoring coefficient beta K is not necessarily one over two, uh, two plus K. It just satisfy the two conditions uh, uh, introduced by by hyper C1 and C2. Then I can prove, okay, I, I can prove even in infinite dimensional space, I can prove, okay, the, the sequence defined by my EAG 5.7 converging in norm to the optimal solution, which is the orthogonal projection, yes, of, of, of W onto the solution set. Okay. Now, final slides, okay, the proof is very technical. The main thing is to prove Okay, three things. The first of all, to prove to prove zk is bounded. The second is very very fundamental. Okay, prove the basic inequality. And then then we 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 rewrite the inequality in this form. And then I can prove I can prove the limit sup limit sup of mu k is not positive. And then this implies s k goes to zero. That means zk can do this to restart. No, okay, that's that's finished the proof. That's my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hong Kun. I'm really very sorry. We probably don't have yes, uh, time know, for the questions here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very sorry, but uh, we can discuss uh, offline. So yeah. thank you very much. Uh,